What's up, everybody? It is your boy Nick or Jonum, and today, boy, do I have a game for you. I have a rapid game that I played that the computer thinks I was 1800. Now, my rapid rating is 1612. It's a pretty good rating. Uh, that's why when I'm doing the Road to 2000 series, I'm doing it in Blitz because I can't really do Blitz that well. I can't do Blitz. I cannot do Bullet. Um, I'm trying now. I'm doing some warm-up games on Lee Chess. I have a lot of games I played on Lee Chess recently. And when you go to Lee Chess, it starts you off at 1500 and you play a couple games and your rating dips down or goes up. Mine over there is like a 1300. And then I go over here and the first game I play on this account for Blitz. Um, I'm playing against a 900 and I lose. Um, let's just, I resigned because yeah, it hit me with a fork and I was like, I don't want to lose my queen. And so whatever. Anyways, so this game today, like I said, the computer thinks I'm at 1800. And that's awesome, being 16, 12. My accuracy is in the 80s. Uh, it's just a really, really good game. And yeah, and we're gonna get into the game right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is my game where the computer thinks I'm at 1800, as you heard in my intro. Let me scroll down here real quick. Yeah, it says, it says I'm 1850. You cannot see it on there. Let me... There we go. The computer thinks I'm 1850 and thinks my opponent, who is 1618, is a 1400 on the dot. So as you see right here, 83.5% accuracy for me. Zero brilliant moves, one great move, 22 best, 30 excellent, nine good, three book, three inaccuracies, one mistake, zero misses, zero blunders. My opponent, 72.4. Zero great, zero brilliant, 21 best, 26 excellent, 11 good, two book, three inaccuracies, three mistakes, one miss. My lamp just fell down a little bit. Let me move that. All right. So as you see, I have the white pieces and I do 1B3. That's my new favorite move, like my new favorite um, opening I've been doing. It just throws a lot of people off guard. Um. I'm having no water over here. I need some water desperately. I'm like Patrick in SpongeBob. Water! SpongeBob? I think it was SpongeBob. Anyways, so yeah, 1B3 confuses a lot of people. And my opponent does the symmetrical variation, which is 1B6, uh, Bishop C2, and Bishop C. No, Bishop B2, and Bishop B7. And that is, this is the extent of the opening theory, per se. Let me get into these moves here on the screen. Um, so this is the end of the opening. And honestly, I couldn't tell you too much about this. Um, I have been doing some study sessions on my Twitch late. I mean, not my Twitch, my kick. I've been studying some openings and I've been really honing in this opening. And I haven't got to this line yet. I've been focusing on the classical variation and the modern variation. Both of them are interesting lines and some of them transpose into different lines. So the symmetrical, I don't really know, but I just played some typical opening concepts, which I do know, which is E3. E3 lets this diagonal open for this bishop. And you'll see here, I do some pretty fun things with it. And they do this sort of opening. I think this is a Danish I'm not too well versed I believe opening on this side of the board pushing the E and F pawns may be a Danish but I'm not too sure I, I didn't take advantage of it um the computer wants me to go bishop e2 which I did and they go knight f6 and I go c4 c4 is also a very important move it um instead of putting this here which would be stupid <laughs> Because you block in your bishop and you block in your knight's access. You go c4 to open the bishop and you could also let your knight jump around. And they go here, pushing the pawn g6. And I let my knight jump into the game and they go here, bishop g7. So now they have, they kind of have like a hippo. They have both fee and keto bishops and on this side. And they have a decent space around their king um, and some pretty good protection. So I go up here waiting for them to castle. They castle and I castle. And um, push the pawn. I go up here, ready to make a monster outpost for my knight. And I'm not going to spoil the game, but my knight 
is very powerful. I'd say my knight is like a queen in this game. Um, so here we go. Uh, my knight is moving around. I was, uh, let me count how many knight moves this is. Um, so this knight right here on F3. So I got one move. Let's do two moves. So it goes here. It went from here to there. And now it's going to go to here. <laughs> so that's three. One, two, three. And moving around this night. And now I'm about to do another, another move. Four. So one, two, three, four. That's my fourth night move. And it pushed me around again. And this is five. So I got five night moves with my little friend here. So I got one, <laughs> two, three, four, five. That knight has made a journey and back. But as you see, it is currently on E6 and it's about to hit every single piece imaginable. This knight is covering, I think, you know, eight squares. I got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, my brain's not working. Count for me. Six. Not, wow. Eight. I got eight, eight squares at night is surrounding. And it's right in the whole position. And as you notice, they have a rook in the corner. And they have a knight in the corner that cannot move. So in this position, I was thinking, oof, I'm going to take a pawn here, which I did. I took the pawn. And I'm going to do something about this knight. And move it somewhere i should have moved it first uh but it would have just been taken and that would have been pointless so yeah that's why i, I don't know why i was just so in the perfect world let's just say they didn't take that night and they did a stupid move like this i would have you know been in a good position if they didn't take again and they did another stupid move i would have taken then and then taken then and then put my knight back that's what i was trying to think about doing but obviously that didn't happen because that's really stupid because yeah that's really stupid so they're obviously trying to dislodge this pawn here and attack it and get some pressure and just so i can you know relinquish this outpost but i still have my bishop here protecting and supporting that outpost but the pawn there is a lot better so i go here peter says uh knight takes is best uh it says knight takes rook takes then e4 and then doing some other fun little moves didn't do any of that so they take i go back and now i still have this lovely connect four all these four pawns i have a monster control on these dark squares and the light squares you know i got this bishop aiming down this there's not really much there but i also have this bishop and this knight so let me see how many squares i control on this board right now so i got one two three four uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I'm controlling all these squares. And as you can see, well, besides the ones down at the bottom of the board, I, I can count those too. But as you see, like six, actually 15 squares. Yeah, I got this one. Yeah, I got those ones. As you see, I'm controlling a ton of stuff in their position, and they can't do anything. They can't do anything. And I thought, like, I, this is the best position I've ever had in my life, especially against somebody, like, who's a 1600. But I guess I'm a 1600 now, so I guess, yeah. So they go here, making a move, and I push my pawn up, trying to, I guess, I was trying to want them to go on passant. And then I could add this, this rook here, just on this file, and about to mess the whole life up to bits. Didn't happen. Wish it would. But they go here. Um, discovering attack on my bishop. And I go here taking a pawn and protecting my bishop now. They go here taking that pawn back. And right here in this position, I actually take the um, take the bishop. And it says knight takes here is best. Because if I go back, then they just take and take and take. Hmm. So I could have gotten bad real quick, but so my inaccuracy could have gotten a lot worse. So, so I see why that wasn't inaccuracy now, because if they took what 
they took with the knight, it would have been a fun... Well, I probably wouldn't have made this video. <laughs> so they take back with a rook, and I get my little dream position here. I get this bishop on this diagonal. And now I have this whole open file to myself. And I, I have just this massive grip on all of these squares. There's nothing for them to do. Not really. And yeah, they put the king onto a safe square. I get my knight into the game, ready to do some funny business, jump around maybe, jump in here, attack a piece maybe, I don't know. They push a pawn, and I go here doing a little fork or uh, Computer wants me to, what does the computer want me to do? Uh, wants me to take the free knight. <laughs> Who'd have thought taking a free piece would be good? But I was like, ooh, a fork. Wow, I like forks, those are cool, especially one that's attacking the rook and the queen but i allowed a check and they check me again i go back and now they move their queen from being attacked i take the rook um i took the rook with the uh bishop obviously and they take back here i take and the comp they're trying really desperately to do like a mate and one uh, sort of deal. Yeah, if I did any other move besides uh, taking, I, I could have taken here, which would have been a good move instead of doing a queen trade. That would have been a really good move now that I think about it. Uh, yeah, that would have been that would have been nice. And then I could have screwed around their position a little longer. But instead, I was be I didn't want to be too risky. So I took back with the queen and do a little queen trade. And now they take my horsey. My poor little horsey. Poor guy. He was so young. He did so many moves. Actually, this wasn't this one. It was a different one. Oh, yeah. The other guy died. My other guy, my other horsey, they did like all those amazing moves. He ended up doing six moves in total. Had a great position from that horsey. But hey, he served his purpose well. So I go back, have this monster connect on these light squares. And they go here attacking me. Put him in a little check. And I get my other rook into the game. And my bishop perishes as well and now i am up six points of material and the computer thinks i'm doing pretty well and i give him a little check and we do some fun little end game stuff here and i was really confused with what to do and my advantage kind of slips from my grasp i believe um i mean it's really hard to slip when you're up this many material points whatever the hell but i just didn't make the best moves i let them take a pawn so i was only up one rook and you know things can happen in the end game if you don't make the right move so i go here give him a check they go back they give another check and i'm trying to do a little mate but that rook is bothering me and i can't do a ladder obviously because my other rook will be hanging if i take that pawn here and it'll be equal which will not be fun and so yeah we do some moves um i take this pawn because if they take him up a rook and they want to keep their rook because they don't want to take the chance of being down a rook, obviously, because they'll easily win. And if they still have a rook in the game, they can try to come back, which, yeah, that did not happen, but almost did. And here I'm just giving a ton of checks, not really sure what to do. And I'm just trying to do some stuff. I took a pawn there, moved around a little bit, hopped around, did some fun little jumps. And in this position, I pushed my pawn. This pawn push is crucial because this as you will see, allows me to win this game. So they go here, blocking my pawn from moving anymore, but I just attack the rook. They go back, push the pawn up again. Uh, I believe the computer says rook c7 is the best idea. Um, I don't, I think taking this would probably be better, I guess, but I mean, maybe not. Oh yeah, maybe not because I cannot ladder mate them. So if they went, so that's what I did actually. I push this pawn here and they push that pawn. I go up here and it's just a simple, easy ladder mate. And I win the game. Um, so it was a pretty good game. And you will see, I won my checkmate obviously, but I could have lost in plenty of positions. If they went here and I give them a check, I couldn't have done a ladder mate, um, which was my whole my whole plan but i could have brought the king up it says and they i guess they could have pushed the pawn i, I don't know and then it says rook takes 
this one. Yeah, it would have been a lot longer of an end game, obviously. But as you see, my opponent, they did some inaccuracies and they did some mistakes, which allowed me to, I took advantage of them and it allowed me to win this game. First mistake was attacking my knight and I found all the correct moves to hop around. They probably thought it was trapped. Then I did another mistake. Um, that was a miss. What was the miss there for the other person? Knight h5 was the best move because it allowed them to take okay and then i would have okay i see so yeah even little tactics there they, they missed and i'm glad they missed them so yeah this was another big mistake that could have cost me the game if they took back here it would have been a lot worse actually this is a different position no it's not like yeah if i went there yeah it would have been equal for uh, for them but that did not happen and yeah, how many times have I said that this game? This is a line I'm showing you, but it did not happen. <laughs> this line did not happen. This line did not happen. But yeah, um, this is one of my best games I've played in a while, especially on Rapid. So I have a lot of other games that I have played, like I said, on Lee Chess. And I have this PGN files on my chess.com. And if you want to see them, let me know down in the comments below and follow my socials you know how it is give me a like give me a subscribe and yeah that is about it i'm gonna pull up my full webcam oh that's not full at all oopsies let me there we go making it larger but yeah so it's been your boy nick or john hopefully you enjoyed this video leave a like if you liked it and i'll see you in the next one peace